Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, as we celebrate this Eucharist, let us implore the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and let us ask her to accompany us in our journey towards the Kingdom of God, so that we may become less unworthy to partake of the mysteries of God's love, let us now humbly call to mind our sins and entrust ourselves to God's merciful love. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who chose the Blessed Virgin Mary foremost among the poor and humble to be the mother of the Savior, grant we pray that following her example, we may offer you the homage of sincere faith and place in you all our hope of salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading 
from the book of Maccabees. As King Antiochus was traversing the inland provinces, he heard that in Persia, there was a city named Elimaeus, famous for its wealth in silver and gold, and that its temple was very rich, containing gold helmets, breastplates, and weapons, left there by Alexander, son of Philip, king of Macedon, the first king of the Greeks. He went, therefore, and tried to capture in, and pillage the city. But he could not do so, because his plan became known to the people of the city, who rose up in battle against him. So he retreated, and in great dismay, withdrew from there to return to Babylon. While he was in Persia, a messenger brought him news that the armies sent into the land of Judah had been put to flight, that Lysias had gone at first with a strong army and been driven back by the children of Israel, that they had grown strong by reason of the arms, men, and abundant possessions taken from the armies they had destroyed, that they had pulled down the abomination which he had built upon the altar in Jerusalem, and that they had surrounded with high walls both the sanctuary, as it had been before, and his city of Bethzur. When the king heard this news, he was struck with fear and very much shaken. Sick with grief because his designs had failed, he took this to his bed. There, he remained many days, overwhelmed with sorrow, for he knew he was going to die. So he called in all his friends and said to them, Sleep has departed from my eyes, for my heart is sinking with anxiety. I said to myself, Into what tribulation have I come, and in what floods of sorrow am I now? Yet I was kindly and beloved in my rule. But I now recall the evils I did in Jerusalem, when I carried away all the vessels of gold and silver that were in it, and for no cause, gave orders that the inhabitants of Judah be destroyed. I know that this is why these evils have overtaken me. <clears throat> and now I am dying in bitter grief in a foreign land. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will rejoice in your salvation, O Lord. I will rejoice in your salvation, O Lord. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will declare all your wondrous deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, Most High. I will rejoice in your salvation, O Lord. Because my enemies are turned back, overthrown and destroyed before you, you rebuke the nations and destroy the wicked. Their name you blotted out forever and ever. I will rejoice in your salvation, O Lord. The nations are sunk in the pit they have made. In the snare they set, their foot is caught. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, nor shall the hope of the afflicted forever perish. I will rejoice in your salvation, O Lord. Please all stand. is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Some Sadducees, those who deny that there is a resurrection, came forward and put this question to Jesus, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, If someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman but died childless. Then the second and the third married her, and likewise all the seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. Now at the resurrection, whose wife will that woman be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, The children of this age marry and remarry, but those who are deemed worthy to attain to the coming age and to the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. They can no longer die, for they are like angels, and they are the children of God, because they are the ones who will rise. That the dead will rise, even Moses made known in the passage about the bush, when he called Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not God of the dead, but of the living, for to him all are alive. Some of the scribes said in reply, Teacher, you have answered well. And they no longer dared to ask him anything. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, tomorrow we will celebrate the solemnity of Christ the King. And our readings today prepare us for, the more, for tomorrow's great celebration by cautioning us of possible temptations, especially the temptation to think that this world, our present world, is the true kingdom. Magandang paghahanda para sa pagdiriwang natin ng kapistahan ng Kristong Hari bukas ang paalaala sa ating mga pagbasa ngayon na huwag nating isipin na ang mundong ito ang tunay na kaharian. In our first reading today, we heard about the death of King Antiochus. He ruled over the Israelites and he tried to persuade the Israelites to reject their faith in God. And he threatened them that if they will not deny God and reject their faith in God, they will be killed. And in fact, many were killed. Many were executed because they refused to follow the orders of the king. They refused to reject their faith in God. And now, in our reading, we are told that this powerful king, this king who tried to kill many, this king who thought he was so powerful, now, 
he dies. My dear brothers and sisters, the story of King Antiochus is a very good reminder to all of us that those who try to destroy God and those who try to destroy those who believe in God will eventually self-destruct. We do not even have to fight them. They will destroy themselves. Yan ang nakikita natin sa ating unang pagbasa at sa kasaysayan ng mundo. Lahat ng nagtangkang sirain ang Diyos at ang mga sumasampalataya sa Diyos, sila mismo bumabagsak. Hindi sila nagtatagal, naglalaho silang parang bula. At nakakalimutan sila, hindi na naaalala. They are like hitting solid foundation. You try to destroy God, you try to destroy those who have faith in God, you are just hurting yourself. Because the kingdom of God is not only this world, there is something more, something better. In our gospel today, Jesus encounters the Sadducees who do not believe in the resurrection of the dead. They do not believe that there is life after this world. And so for the Sadducees, the only kingdom is the kingdom of this world. There is no other world, there is no other kingdom than this one. My dear brothers and sisters, as we prepare for tomorrow's great feast, when we will proclaim Jesus as King, let us be sure to whose kingdom we belong. Tiyakin natin kung kaninong kaharian tayo na papabilang at nagpapasakop. Baka nagpapasakop tayo sa kaharian ng mundong ito na maglalaho din naman. As we proclaim Jesus as King, let us also tell Him, I want to belong to your kingdom. Every day, as we pray the Lord's Prayer, we say, May your kingdom come. It is also like saying, Lord, I want to belong to your kingdom. The kingdom not of this world, but the kingdom that lasts forever. My dear brothers and sisters, let us sit to it that we belong not to the kingdom of the world that will surely pass away, but to the kingdom of God where Christ is king because that kingdom will last for all eternity. Please stand. How glorious is the peace and hope of resurrection. Let us pray with hearts set free from foolish doubt or hesitation because we believe in the promise of Jesus who rose from the dead. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church throughout the world may continue to preach the good news of the resurrection and the life of the world to come, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer, that in our daily lives, we may bring the light of hope to those who live in darkness and despair. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer, that the poor, the homeless, and the needy may experience the Lord of life in the love and generosity of those who are kind to them. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the sick and those who suffer may discover the healing presence of Christ in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those who have died may find joy in the certain hope of resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray in silence for our personal petitions. We remember the people who requested our prayers and the intentions offered in this Mass. God of the living, may this Eucharist give us a longing for the eternal banquet which you have prepared for us where we will enjoy the happiness of your presence forevermore. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the offerings of our devotion, and grant that we who celebrate your Son's work of boundless charity, May, through the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary, be confirmed in love of you and of our neighbor, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name in veneration of the blessed ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I, I am not, not worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but, but only say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, 
I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. Grant to your church, O Lord, that strengthened by the power of this sacrament, she may eagerly walk in the pathways of the gospel until she reaches the blessed vision of peace, which the Virgin Mary, your lowly handmaid, already enjoys eternally in glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Amen.